Hi everyone! Hello. Long time no see. Nakalipas time no ng see. isang buwan. Yes. May pandemic pa rin. <laughs> pero nadagdagan ng bagyo. Uh, mulan pa. <laughs> correct. I'm G. Carigala. I'm uh, Jeff Mercado. Hindi, okay. Sorry. Oh my God. Hoy. Walang, walang. Ayun na, yun na, yun na. Jeff Mercado. <laughs> Psych and T.O.K. Uh, uh, Psych and T.O.K. <laughs> <laughs> We want to welcome you again. Okay, hindi yung strong start, pero gusto pa rin namin kayo i-welcome to another episode of... Ato. Ato. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to press play in this video and maybe get to the end of it. Um, Again, it's been a month. Kumusta na kayo? Kumusta ka, Mr. Mercado? <clears throat> Ito, marami nangyari. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think we'll 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 touch upon more later on. But technically speaking, I am I am from Marikina, so yung bahay namin sa Marikina na ano ba? Lumangoy <laughs> for lack of a I think lack of a fonder term. So we were affected. Um, our our area is merely a hundred meters away from or not hundred, but a few hundred meters away from the river, and it's my first time. I'm I'm. I, I, I never really lived in Marikina for a long for a long while. I, I've always been somewhere else. So, so when I saw the flood rising, <laughs> it's an experience <laughs> of watching all this blue, all this brown muck <laughs> surrounding your entire house. So yes, so yun. so we managed the man to re- relocate for a while after when the floods have subsided and the power wasn't back yet, and then the the internet was also not working. So. We decide we were allowed to re- relocate to a different place where there's more there are more utilities working. So as a result, we were able to get things done. And when everything got back to normal, we were able to return to the Marikina house. So really interesting how how I think um, Murphy's Law is the most apt way to describe 2020. That if something can go wrong, it will definitely be worse. <laughs> Yes, we have one month left to test yeah, one month. <laughs> Maybe we don't want to push it. Yeah, wag na, wag na. But I guess Mr. Mercado's little anecdote about his experiences or his experience with the most recent, recent typhoon, Typhoon Rolly? Ulysses. Ulysses. Hello, eh. Um, <laughs> no, walang patawad, di ba? Um, yeah. His most recent anecdote about these most recent typhoons actually lead us into our topic for today. Again, we're trying to keep relevant here and we're going to talk about perspectives and not really just any perspective, um, but perspectives about resilience later on down the line. Um, how has your outlook been affected or your view of things <laughs> by, the, <laughs> by the event? Well, well for context, um, I, am a, I am a new... I'm a new dad. So I have a seven-month-old baby who just qu- recently had uh, an operation because she had she had hydrocephalus. And the operation, I mean, the operation went well, but the complications that happened after <laughs> was terrifying. I have a, there's a different um, story for that. And then, so uh, we also, so as a new dad in a pandemic, and there was a storm <laughs> that almost swallowed the entire house. It was, it was, it was clarifying as as to what are my what are my uh, priorities, what are my roles, what are my goals, and who matter in my who matters in my life. So I think on the one hand, um, Marikina or these places where they're near the river, they're always prone to any type of disaster. But on the other hand, I'm able to realize that as a as a new dad as a young looking dad <laughs> uh, um, things change it's like even though I, I'm I'm still biologically the same person but somehow my purpose in this bi- in this in this meat <laughs> in this biology has changed and even with the storm I realized that my purpose has changed again so I think no matter what no matter no matter what event occurs, there's always going to be that change, I guess, in me. So at the moment, how has it affected my outlook? I think I can handle more. <laughs> I never realized I was this resilient. I never realized that I could cope this much. And although 
I'm not saying that I, I I've done this alone. I, I I've had a lot of help, and that's also the other the other thing that resilience never really comes from your just yourself. There's always someone else helping you carry the load. So yeah, I guess that's where I am at the moment. How about you, Miss Regala? <laughs> uh, nothing really as monumental <laughs> and life changing has happened to me despite the big things that are going on around me immediately. So obviously the pandemic is still here. The storm took place, but I am in an area that is pretty secure. No floods, barely any um, cut off internet, cut mm-hmm. off electricity. Hindi naging problema sa amin. So well, what I'm getting from it, when I compare, say, your experience with my experience, your perspective, your immediate perception of things going on is that the gap's wide. Like, I mean, it's your, it was your first time seeing the Marikina River crawl to your doorstep, <laughs> while I have never had that experience. I've never seen <clears throat> that. I've never yeah. perceived that experience. So my perspective or my understanding of the event is entirely different. And I think it kind of limits the way that I can, or the extent of my sympathizing and empathizing with people. That's all right. Um, uh, yes, thank you, psychology. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make you a bad person. <laughs> yeah, it, well, that much I know naman. It's just that, you know, in these times that are difficult, often, whereas sa'yo naman, siguro you were feeling helpless but directed yeah. because you had, <clears throat> by the way, his daughter's my ina-anak. You had my ina-anak <laughs> in the forefront of your mind. Everything. Yung sa'kin naman, yung iniisip ko lang was, ano yung magagawa ko? Kasi, whereas ikaw, alam mo yung gagawin mo dun eh. You have something right in front of you. You have someone right in front of you that you have to attend to. Because of the limitations of my location, what I could see, what I could perceive, I couldn't exactly move forward as actively, I feel, as other people. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. in your case. Well, if it's any consolation, um, the, the thought of wanting to act, the thought of... Um, not wa- the the desire to help was not was not just limited to your own space there are many people as well who had had the same desire just had the more but just had more access to be able to implement such desires and on my end it was a different experience to be receiving help i'm normally the one who i'm i'm used to <laughs> extending help i'm used to lending the hand but it was comforting it was humbling it was different to be the one to receive a, a relief package. It's different to have people volunteer to go to your place and clean. So mm-hmm. it's uh, the you are part of that collective, the people who wanted to help. And you know, parang it doesn't make just because you weren't able to to actively take take part of that doesn't mean that um, your thoughts weren't felt. It was. <laughs> oh my God. Counseling, guys. Welcome oh, to the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Oh That's $15 an hour. So thank you. <laughs> I, I accept PayPal and uh, <laughs> pay Maya. Oh, <laughs> I think it's about time we, br- no, we bring it back. Sorry, yeah. guys. But Go ahead. Um, siguro, clue it in uh, Barkada kami ni Mr. Mercado. Mm-hmm. So this is part of it. But okay, let's bring it back to TOK. I had mentioned a while ago that perspectives and later on perspectives of resilience will be the focus of today's um, session, episode, 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 sorry. session. The teacher, the old teacher. Right? <laughs> um, and well, as we do in TOK, well, we're gonna TOK it first. Why perspectives? Yeah. Well, that's really because, well, in the two curricula that you guys cover or that new IB students will cover, yeah. perspective is largely attached to one's personal knowledge. So, Mr. Mercado, would you care to elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when you talk about perspective, it's your gateway, it's your access to to knowledge. <laughs> okay, so when you, let's say, at the moment you're seeing, you're, as you're watching the video, you are, you are able to perceive faces with eyes and these faces look familiar, but in reality, these are just pixels that that uh, mimic or try to put put into into something that we can understand faces whom of people whom you met before so <clears throat> i cannot know what exactly you're seeing 
I cannot know what how exactly you're hearing our voices in my head. I have a particular way of, uh, a particular memory of how my voice sounds. But in your own ears, <clears throat> it might be quite different. <laughs> so when it comes to personal knowledge, I think a lot of it is perspective. A lot of it is simply your access. And what's what's I guess unique, what's so interesting about this is that everyone has that particular access. And yet, despite the unique access accesses, we can still agree. <laughs> True. And I guess, um, riding off of what you initially said, I like to think of perspectives as a box. A so frame. What, or a frame. Oh my God, yeah, much yeah, better. Yeah. Thank you, psychology. Again. Of course. I'm also a photographer. <laughs> Thank you, photography, art. <laughs> But your perspective is really determined by a particular box of viewing things, okay? So um, what you perceive is contained within that box. So maybe there are hints also of connections with sense perception, a way of mm-hmm. knowing, yeah. useful in the old curriculum. And when we talk about, say, seeing things, useful, <laughs> okay, or your perspective. Right now, my perspective is limited by this particular box. And when I look another way, my perspective shifts. When I look this way, that means that I cannot see what is outside of the box my perspective is limited. My access is thus limited to mm-hmm. just what is within that mm. perspective. So, but just because you have that that specific pers- perspective doesn't mean that the room that you're in no longer exists. Exactly. <laughs> so I am aware there. that there are other perspectives. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of trying to or at- attempting to. Is this, is this where empathy comes in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's <laughs> the question, eh? <laughs> Could it be? I guess we'll get there in a while. <laughs> we will get there in a while. And um, so we're in relationship, in relation, in relating perspectives with the new curriculum. Perspective is actually perspectives is one of the key concepts in the new curriculum. So mm-hmm. it's unavoidable. Right. It's part of the knowledge framework. Oh, nice. So we're gonna dive straight into it. Because <laughs> swimming na si Mr. Mercado last yeah. week. <laughs> We're going to Not the ideal to waters, though. <laughs> dive into it and, you know, start by defining things. Okay, so you can do this yourselves. Google, what is perspective? First of all, it refers to how we perceive things. It refers to our view and the experiences that come after viewing something. It's your outlook, the right? So again, if you look inside this box, your perspective is what is in that box. Mm-hmm. Secondarily... <laughs> Yes, may kodigo pa rin ako. At yung ko ko kasi yan sa'yo. <laughs> Secondarily, <laughs> perspectives refer to the processing or understanding mm-hmm. of something. So parang when you use, um, I have a perspective of something. Or um, when you use it grammatically, I gain perspective about mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, think, I think another way to describe it is that on the one hand, perspective is a process. It's a way of acquiring um, information. And on the other hand, it's also a product. It's a finished, a finished, um, it's a finished product where everything has been collected. It's been, it's been, pro, it's been processed, and here you are. Okay, yes. well, I'm so hard to go, guys. Oh, do I? Yes, kaya siya tiyo teacher. So, so, okay. I'm a tiyo teacher with with uh, who just drank coffee. So hey, let's go. <laughs> I still have my coffee. Oh, but nice. I'm strong tonight. Okay. So, next up in our código, now that we've um, defined perspectives in two ways as both a prod, uh, sorry, a process and a product, mm-hmm. that process, maybe we can now talk about how the heck we got the perspective of the resilient Filipino. Yeah, yeah. Where is that coming I wonder why. So, do we... Are we going to call in a, a historian like Mr. Palan Reyes to talk about... <laughs> <laughs> the history Sana of the mo ko, di ba? Oh, di ba? message mo siya. But I miss him. We can't. Aww. He's faculty, guys. We miss yeah. him. But anyway, Filipino resilience, Mr. Mercado. Right. Any guesses? I guess, um, I think it comes from one of the perceptions that Filipinos are happy. One of the happiest people on earth. That and they 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 find they try to make sense of that because our country is in in a place where disasters are frequent, <laughs> and our 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 current uh, 
economic status is not necessarily ideal. And yet, despite all these uh, setbacks, we are still one of the happiest people. We still learn how to laugh. We can make fun of things. We can make light of things. And I think that's where, that's where the idea that Filipinos appear to be resilient. <laughs> and the, you know, I mean, if you look at the past disaster videos, or kung may, ano, kung may, kung may earthquake or may, may, may bagyo or kaya may, may volcanic eruption, it's hard not to see some a Filipino smiling at a camera. <laughs> so <laughs> that that image of a smiling person behind and then right behind him is, the, is a volcanic eruption. I think that's one of the caricatures <laughs> yeah. that people might have about Filipino resilience. I, 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 I'm just guessing. <laughs> yeah, I, I also have to guess. I mean, it's one of the key skills in TOK because you got to test out what you believe to check if it's valid knowledge. Oh yeah, ako, hindi ko alam. Joke lang, hindi. <laughs> Kaya nga manguhula eh. Oh, kinuha mo lang kasi sagot ko. <laughs> Sorry na. Wala sa script eh. <laughs> Wala sa script. Mr. Mercado. Ano? Oh, ano? Yeah, ako, yung gum- ako yung gumawa ng script ngayon, guys. Oh nga pala. But, He's Thank making you. it shine with no, I'm, accessories. I'm making guesses. <laughs> oh, diba? Pero okay, sige. Um, siguro ako, because I'm lang lit and I love definitions, I just gotta define things before I find um, siguro example. Sabi dito na, resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. Mm. It is like... synonymous to being tough. It's synonymous kung Tagalog, matatag ka. Diba? Ooh. Para kang... <clears throat> Unwavering. <laughs> ano ka, kawayan ka na kapag hinahanginan, hindi ka nababali. Sinasabayan. You bend but not break. Yo, oh, I think oh, that's ano. not a term. Thank you! <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so yun, sakto, diba? Tapos the other definition is the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape. Elasticity. So, mm-hmm. matatag ka, tough ka, yeah. pero willing ka din mag-bend. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, jackpot ang Pilipino in this perspective. <laughs> Where, Kasi, yeah. um, well, my understanding of the whole Filipino resilient perspective is parang wala. wala immortal. <laughs> immortal ang Pilipino, guys. Oh, yeah. na 20 na bagyo ang dumating <clears throat> at the pandemic at na may matanda kang inaalagaan or mm-hmm. bata kang minamahal. Diba? New in mm-hmm. Kahit sunod-sunod rin mo, hindi mababali ang Pilipino. Hmm, bibili pa rin ng milk tea. <laughs> Speaking of milk tea, teka lang, magka-digress ako kasi ah, sige, yeah. diba yung suot ko, baba milk tea ang tea. Ano? Besh, yung hikaw ko, milk tea. Hala. <laughs> ang random lang. I can, I can see the craze. <laughs> so, like, yeah, my passions are found. But, um, I guess... A fine example of this for me, of Filipino resilience is, remember when we were in college? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was, well, for me, it was 10 years ago. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, Mr. Mercado is actually one batch lower than me. Yeah, 2011. I'm 2010. Um, mm-hmm. That means we were already in Ondoy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, 2009. Um, yun, eh. 2009 nga yun, start of the school year, third year siya, fourth year ako. Tapos alala ko, that was the first time that I saw and people were proud of this notion that we were resilient. Na parang, ang daming clues eh. Ang daming, um, mm-hmm. kasi dawn of social media din. Nung bumagyo, agad nagkaroon ng check-ins with your friends online. You check, oh, okay ka ba? Mm-hmm. The internet wasn't down in some area. So you could <clears throat> yeah. check in on people. People flagged that they were safe. Tapos sunod-sunod yun na may magpo-post ng lahat ng lugar kung saan ka pwede mag-donate. Mm-hmm. And then immediately after, relief operations, pupunta ka dun sa gym. Ang, parang, oh yeah, covered courts. Yeah. Diba sa covered courts? Oh, alam niyo na kung tagasang kami. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. That's what I'm getting at. Na, yeah. I mean, it took that long a time. I was already turning 20-something at that time. Tapos, oh, tapos hindi, hindi ko mafati. Okay, hindi ko binigyan ng time yun na. Ngayon, <laughs> na-distract ako. ako. Pero, hindi ako... Like, it never passed my mind that the resilience factor was a bad thing at that time. Kasi nga, the Filipino, 
at least the people that I was immediately surrounded with who were Filipinos, who still yeah, are, yeah. assembled so quickly, did everything that they can, were both tough and elastic, unbending at the same time. Tapos between that time and this year, ang laki ng shift. Kasi dati, resilience was a good thing. <clears throat> yeah. Now, Badge of honor siya dati. Oo. And now it's... <laughs> Diba? Honestly, mas marami akong nakitang mga tao on social media this year na parang, don't you say it. Don't you dare say it. Bawal ang resilience. Hindi waterproof ang Filipino. Don't you dare. Diba? Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. Hala of na course, ano, of course, ano naman. you have to understand din na uh, maybe back then sa Ondoy, uh, we, weren't, we weren't expecting disasters of that scale. And to watch people uh, recover, and recover quickly that was that was the epitome of i think what what we are describing as the filipino resilience and you know what I mean? you're hoping that that was 10 years ago you're hoping that by now the response would be better or that there have been measures made so that disasters such as that no longer occur but they do <laughs> so i guess part of the reason why um people now have a have an animosity towards Filipino resilience is because they are they don't want the they don't want to abuse that innate quality and then leaving it at that it's like it's like uh, you have a friend or it's like you know you have a friend who's always there for people and who's always willing to help and who's always um, available for when when people are in need and yet and yet when and then when you start to watch them falter you sometimes want to bring back that image of them being strong of them being reliable of them being being resilient and then forgetting that this person is already does need help that this person is already at ends with so i think that's where that's where some of the some, some of the perspectives now are coming from that <clears throat> back then when we had no idea what to expect, we were pretty resilient. Mm. But now we know we knew what to expect, and it still happened. We're not resilient; we're negligent. <laughs> so, so I think that I think that's where the the animosity is coming from. Ika, what do you think? Actually, I po process ko lang yung Kasi oh, ako yung okay. nagtanong eh, sinagot okay. mo ako, so thank you. Oops. <laughs> Wala sa script yun ah. Wala, wala, madaming wala sa script today. The big topic that's relevant to the world. Pero, ano tayo dito? I, I love that you broke it down at the end. Yung parang synthesize mo na dati, bago kasi siya. Kaya yung perspective was like this. And then this time around, um, nag-accumulate na yung exposure from bit, natin especially between mm. say tw- 2009 and 2020 that our perspective shifts. Diba? So, we have to acknowledge that there is first a perspective that is attributed or corresponded to a given time. Mm-hmm. In 2009, Mr. Mercado and I were part of the same community. So we were exposed to and had access to the immediate perspective of <clears throat> yeah. immediate yeah. assembly, immediate relief operations. Mm-hmm. And then that meant that for us, resilience was a good thing. Diba? Kasi bago lang sa amin. Mm. Pero over time, a 10-year gap took place. We already possessed the knowledge of the previous event and the many events thereafter and the successes and failures of handling those events that at this point in time, in the face of a very similar event that we perceive in our per- perspectives <laughs> now in 2020, uh-huh. well, our reactions are now different and our perspective, yung pag-process namin or, under, or our understanding of the handling of the event is different. And I think that you guys likely feel the same way. Kasi yun nga, ang audience naman namin dito sa podcast na to, hindi students mainly, but also teachers. Um, baka, yun nga, siguro look back at what you perceived in the year 2009 and your perspective now, pang reflect-reflect lang. Kasi nga, Nakakatulong din yun, at least for me, to process things na ang layo din ng narating ko as a person, pero hindi ko kasalanan or parang hindi totally unfounded yung shift in perspective ko. Yun. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> script, script, script. Babalik na tayo. Script, script. <laughs> okay. So, ano ba? Wala. I have to read the script there. Mr. Mercado, patulong naman. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Maybe okay. lang. I, I guess one more, <clears throat> um, I guess, insight from the current perspective on resilience. I think people are very conscious now that um, I think they're, they are perceiving the government to be failing in in responding to people's needs and <clears throat> to run the narrative that Filipinos are resilient almost excuses the government of their of their, of their so-called negligence i think that's where people now are trying to avoid or they want to fight against that they want to fight against that narrative that <clears throat> a government or perhaps leaders who are unable to respond quickly and appropriately and, and, and effectively can just chalk it up to eh matatag naman yung Pilipino Parang almost as if you're, you're, you're trying to praise us and th- th- that praising um, diverts the attention from your failure <laughs> to, to prepare. And then saying, eh, I mean, this, this, this is what makes us good. This is what makes us uh, Filipino. Diba? So I think that's where many people are coming from. That they are no long, they don't, they don't want <clears throat> this to be another narrative that the Filipinos happen to survive. That yes, we are resilient. Pero sana by choice. Mm. Hindi, yung, hindi yung kailangan mo maging resilient kasi kailangan yung, kailangan yung mabuhay. <laughs> I think that's where we are at, at, at the moment eh, with, with the topic of resilience. That um, <clears throat> you can call us resilient if there's no way for us to prepare. But if there was some, some, some measure or some or some chance for us to have prepared, and yet we didn't. Okay, we can't. We can't um, anymore use that um, narrative that P- Filipinos are resilient, therefore they're going to th- they're going to thrive. I think what people are trying to say now is that we deserve better. Mm. We are resilient, oh my God, the but we also deserve better. Okay, <laughs> thank you because you provided the clear cleanest segue for that to this part of our código of our script. Where oh, you- good job. <laughs> well, you mentioned because the word narrative, and mm-hmm. well, I will langlet this a bit. Yes, go but ahead. There is a narrative. I reeled you in. <laughs> and there is a narrative. Note that it is a series of events arranged, uh, not just arranged, but rather selected by a particular person. So narratives are dependent first on viewing a particular event, okay, and then selecting parts of that event and then rearranging them. Okay, to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And that means that narratives are dependent on what is seen mm-hmm. or viewed or in someone's perspective. Mm-mm. So that means that when people say that the narrative is a man and his family are at home and then a storm comes in <laughs> and they overcome that storm successfully, Okay, when someone has that narrative and promotes that narrative as the only narrative, note that that is a narrative of resilience, it, see, it tends to silence other equally valid or even more valid or necessary mm-hmm. narratives. Yeah, yeah. So one perspective, one point of view can, if it is promoted effectively enough, can silence other narratives, which is overall unfair. Because everyone has a perspective, singular. And mm-hmm. everyone in the plural also has their perspective that they have to assert. Diba? Especially in these times. <laughs> Ang hirap-hirap niya. Nagmamassage na ako ng face. <laughs> Kailangan natin ng relief. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> So thanks for saying that whole narrative thing. It it really brought things back. Na para yeah. perspectives are totally necessary. We don't think kasi about the limits of what we view. Eh. Hmm. We rarely do. And hmm. we also don't often think about how our view can be something that we promote inadvertently, hmm. thus silencing <clears throat> other views. Hmm. Uh, nga, the OK is all about being aware and mindful diba, of um, not just your knowledge, the limits of your knowledge, mm. but also how you disseminate 
or influence others with the mm-hmm. knowledge that you possess. So parang wala, sakto lang Filipino resilience. I'm glad <laughs> that this is our topic. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I guess to, to go back to the content of the curriculum for TOK, <clears throat> I think we're hoping that in the, in the time that you spend learning about TOK, you realize that you have a perspective and that that perspective is limited. And just because it's limited does not mean that it's bad. I think that's one thing that um, somehow it, it has infiltrated our thoughts that to be biased or to have a bias is something that should be avoided. But then again, can you really avoid <laughs> having a specific perspective, a specific thought about things? So it's not that um, it's not that we are we are saying that to be biased or to have one singular perspective is wrong. We're saying that you have one, and it will help if you learn how to broaden. If you we are open enough to realize that. Yeah, if you're going to use the metaphor of the bedroom, you're only looking at one wall. <laughs> you're only looking at one angle of a wall. Okay? I remember <clears throat> back when I was still a moderator for photography club. <laughs> there was one activity where yeah, uh, our, our topic was perspective. And <clears throat> normally people, when they take photos, it's usually at, at their height. <laughs> so they bring the camera to their eyes, which is usually their height. And that's basically what they see in the world. And most of the time, they take photos of what's familiar. So in our, in our activities, we, I would encourage them to go down, go down low, crawl if you have to, and then try to see how the world looks like from that angle. Or go, go really high and then try to look at how the world sees, how, how the same area looks from that angle. So, you know, parang... Going back, when, when we talk about perspectives, it's not wrong to have one. It's also, it, it might not be as healthy to compare <laughs> perspectives, but it might help to realize that it changes, that wow. the perspective we have changes. It's like, I think, um, I think a metaphor that I can use right now is, let's imagine that you are fortunate enough to have a house that has four stories. <laughs> A four-story house <laughs> that's really big. And it's the same house technically. But when you move from room to room, things change. The purpose of the room is different. The, the lighting is different. <clears throat> the people inside the room is different. So when we look at perspective, sometimes we forget that it can change. And the the fear or the, the dread that we are cur- currently experiencing right now again that's another perspective that years from now we just might be we might just be we might just be joking about this i remember back then things felt bad (laughs) we couldn't function yung tipong they had to end the semester technically when 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 ondoy struck and you were left figuring out what to do next and it felt like the felt like the dread would never end. And yet, parang now, nowadays, <clears throat> when, when I wake up, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even recall as, as frequently anymore that I, that I was in that state or that I was looking through the, wor- through the world through that particular frame. So, yun lang, parang to have a perspective is important. To realize it changes is even more important. And to recognize when it's changing, I think, is where the TOK is. Oh that my God. when you start to realize how your perspectives are changing and if you're willing to accept the new cha- the new perspective or retain the old with either either which either of the two you choose that's the okay Lana wala na sa sabihin Joe Lana time dapat tapos na tayo dahil nga pronounces ni Mr. Mercado so well I guess um Siguro to just superimpose it with the whole resilience angle, okay? Remember what Mr. Mercado said, that having a perspective is not bad, okay? That perspective being limited and eventually biased is not bad. What matters is that you're aware of having a perspective and knowing that perspectives change. If you apply it to resilience, think of it this way. That Filipino resilience, in its most basic essence, that perspective is not bad, yeah. What kind of person 
what kind of Filipino <laughs> would not want to be both tough and flexible. Mm-hmm. Diba? But again, you have to consider that, well, these words and the meaning of resilience does not exist in a bubble. Okay? If you take on the greater perspective, the group perspective, wherein narratives of suffering can be silenced, all in the name of uplifting this term resilience and what it's supposed to mean, then that's the time that resilience, the Filipino resilience, that particular perspective can be toxic. So this isn't exactly like a how-to guide of how to determine, oh, that's resilience, oh, that's resilience, good yan, bad yan, no. This is really just us, the OK team, again, reminding you to be mindful of what you know. And now that you know what you know, what will you do with what you know? Uh, Makes sense ba? Oh, naman. Okay. Oh, naman. Okay na tayo. <laughs> kasi two minutes. Actually, nag-extend na ako ng timer. By the way, Oops. lagpas kami ng 30 minutes this time kasi mahalaga to. Yeah. On different levels. Hindi lang kami TOK teachers. Tao din kami. Tao din kayo. So... We should call ourselves patao. <laughs> patao, wow. Badoy na tayo. Gano ka badoy tayo by the last episode, Mr. Mercado. Eh, kasi ano na eh, pas, ano na, after working hours na tayo. <laughs> oh, and speaking of after working hours, let us officially close this TOK, this patok episode session. Teacher talaga. Ano, but okay. officially close it. I just want to say goodbye again and thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Again, I'm signing off. Miss Regina Regala, Langlit TOK and... Mr. Mercado, Psych and TOK as well. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.